hey and welcome back to another Darkfall tutorial. So today we're going to be turning a boring video like this into something that looks like this. And it's pretty simple to do, we'll be mainly using the compositor. So first thing we need to do is make sure we're in Cycles Render. And also set the resolution to be the same as the movie clip that we're using. Increase this to 100% as well. And change the frame rate if you need to. So let's change this window now from the 3D view to the movie clip editor. And we can go ahead and open up our movie clip. So if you want to use the same movie clip I'm using, I'll throw a link in the description as well. Let's get rid of these sidebars with T and N. Let's get rid of them. Okay, so with this scene, um, I kind of want to get change this color from green to blue. That's one thing I want to do. But I'll also mainly add a statue to the scene. And the statue I'm going to be using it was made by Giovanni Luca. So thanks to you for making this and allowing us to use it as well. So let's change this to the 3D view. Go to File. Um, and append. If you want to select a model that you've already made, just go ahead and append the model that you want to use. If you want to use this one, um, I'll throw a link in the description so you can use this one too. Again, thanks to Giovanni for allowing us to use that. Okay, so this model is very well made. Um, we do need to do a few tweaks. First, let's just move the camera so it's right in front of the camera like this. Give that a render. So when he modeled this, I guess it was in internal. We just need to add the uh, materials for it, which he's already made for us. So let's also change the background or the world color. So go to the world settings, change this color to white. And if we select the model and then we want to split this window, change this to the UV image editor. Then let's get rid of that. Split the window again. Um, I didn't mean to do that, let's just join that. I prefer to see it like this for some reason, I don't know. Let's change this one to the uh, node editor, like so. And let's change this to the material panel. So it looks a little bit different than normal. Uh, we just need to check use nodes. Now we have this default diffuse node. Select the diffuse, delete it, go to shift A, go to shader, and you go ahead and use the principal shader if you want to. Or if you've already created shaders in the past, you want to use your own, go ahead and append your own shader. Shift A, go to texture, go to image texture. Drop this here, Shift S to make sure we save this as well. Plug this color into the base color. And then if we select this icon here, we have a, a few images we can use. So we just see which one, which one's which. This is a diffuse color. So we just select this one. Um, and check the preview, looks pretty good. Select this one here, the viewport shade into material. Yeah, it's pretty good. It also comes with a specularity map and a normal map, so if you want to use them as well, it's kind of important to use them. Um, just duplicate this. You want to change this to non color data as well. But I think I'm going to just append my own shader. I prefer to use my own compared to the uh, principled, it's just personal choice, I guess. So I'm just going to speed through this, delete that, connect that up. Okay, so for the roughness, you'd plug the specularity map into that. Uh, this is going to be for the normal. Add a bump node. Plug it that into the height. Plug that into the normal. Change the value, and you're good to go. Okay, so change this back to the node editor. Switch this to the scene tab. Now, if you don't see these nodes here, just check use nodes. You also want to check backdrop if you want to see a preview of what's going on. Uh, to do that as well, Shift A, we need to add an output, go to Viewer Node. So we always need to connect up to the Viewer Node if we want to see what's going on. And the lazy way to do that is pressing Control Shift and left clicking on a node. And that will only work if you've got the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. So it's a pretty useful <laughs> add-on to use. Okay, let's re-render this now and see how it looks. The model looks pretty good, but we just need to get rid of this white background. Uh, we don't need to render that. So selecting the Render Panel. If we scroll down here, under Film, we check uh, Transparent, and there we go. Now it's going to be rendered with transparency. We also want to increase the, uh, the sample, since we're only going to be rendering this as a uh, single image. We're going to be using this later on. Um, but for now, we're going to sit, leave this as a render layer. So Shift A, go to Color, Mix, plug this in here, and plug that into the Viewer node as well. Shift A, go to Input, then we want to go to Movie Clip, or if you want to use an image sequence, you can use that one too. It's entirely up to you. Plug that in here, and then let's connect that up to the Mix node. 
but we want to switch these around like this. And we also want to check this alpha box here so it uses the transparency. And then go ahead and select the movie clip. I don't know why I forgot, but you can just select this icon here since we've already loaded it up. You can choose that. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is realign the model. Um, what we could do is just add a translate node onto the model and then just move that around. But I think I'm just going to go back to the 3D view and do it this way. Press N to bring up the sidebar. Check background images. Add image. Then go down here, select this icon, view a node. And then I'm just going to reposition this model. So it looks as if it's sat right behind these jugs, kind of. Yeah, so let's give this a re-render, see how it looks. Uh, maybe move it up a little bit higher and move it over to the right. Uh, okay, so just move this up a little bit. Something like this. I don't, I don't want to spend too long just repositioning the statue, so I guess we'll call that done. Okay, so let's get rid of this here. This background images, we don't need it. Get rid of that. Okay, so we need to uh, create the mask. So go back to the movie clip editor. This one here. And we're going to create a mask. If you haven't already created masks in the past, it's pretty simple to do. I should press T, press N, get rid of these. We don't need them. Uh, change this from the tracking mode to the masking mode and then select new mask and go ahead and rename this to whatever you want I'm going to call this water drugs and if we zoom in a little bit if we mask around this now by pressing control and left clicking we're going to just create these points like this and we don't have to be too accurate right now we're going to come back and refine this a little bit in a sec so just create these points around here depends on how big your model is as well I know it's only going to be set in the middle, so I don't need to go all the way around it. So press uh, Alt-C to, uh, to close this mask as well. Now I'm just going to reposition these a little bit. Okay, so that looks good. Okay, so now we're going to refine this even more, make it more smoother. So if we press A to select everything, and then V, and then select automatic, it does a pretty good job overall. <laughs> like round here it's pretty good it's smoothed it off it doesn't look jagged but then when we get down here we can see it's yeah it's not good so we need to select these outer handles and just drag these closer to the center and kind of pinches that curve if it makes sense again after you've used it for a little while it gets it becomes second nature it becomes easy to use but um, at first it might be a little bit daunting to use them I know for me it was a bit annoying but that looks good we can always come back and refine this if we need to okay so let's add a new mask Control left click. And this is going to be for the water. We're just going to use this to change the color. Uh, also, make sure we press Alt C to close this. So let's add a new mask. Uh, in fact, before we jump ahead, let's go back and select that mask we just created. Rename it Watercolor. There we go. So add a new mask, which is this one now here. And this is going to be for a shadow. I guess if there was a statue sat here, this it wouldn't be as bright, or there would be a, a kind of a shadow. So I'm going to create that now. Control left click, and something's messed up. So I'm just going to Command Z or Control Z. Control left click again. Create this sort of shape. Again, I'm not being too perfect right now because I'm going to come back and refine it. But I'm just going to get the overall shape like this. Can I make a head shape for the statue? Again, all this depends on what scene you're working with. Um, you need to think about shadows or drop shadows, contact shadows. All these things will help sell it and make it look better. So all these things you should add. Okay, so A to select everything, press V, automatic. And again, we just need to do a few tweaks. Yeah, it looks okay. <laughs> It'll work. So make sure we save that as well. Let's change this back to the node editor. And let's move this over. We do need to do some color correcting um, for both the background and the foreground. So what we can do that now is Shift A, go to color, RGB curves, plug this one here. 
and with color correcting obviously you want to try and match the foreground and background as close as you can so let's first start with this one something like this and then you also want to do the same thing for the background as well so this curve you want to kind of do the opposite of this curve again it's all scene dependent on what you work with so again if I tell you one thing it might be different from your scene so kind of play around with the curves until you get something that you like I'm just going to change the world properties again and make this a little bit brighter give this an orangey orangey color to it as well change this to the red channel just give this a bit of more of a red color for the statue give this a re-render since we changed the lighting okay, it doesn't look too bad um, we want to make sure this is sat behind the jugs as well so we can add the mask next um, but we also want to do the background so let's just do that first shift a color rgb curves again plug this in here like i say you need to kind of go the opposite way with this one to the one that we just did and try and match both of them and i'm not going to spend too much time trying to do this curve right now i'll come back later on and try and work that make it look a little bit better but for the sake of time i'm going to move on <laughs> So just close these down so uh, they don't get in the way. Okay, so next thing we can do is make sure the statue is sat behind these jugs. So Shift A, go to Color, Mix. I guess we could have just duplicated that of a Mix node, but why not use a new one? <laughs> Plug this one into the Viewer node, and then what we want to do, we just take this feed here. We no longer want to take the feed from the image of the image node, we want to take it from the color corrected node, if that makes sense. So just plug that into the bottom input. Shift A, go to input, then mask, drop this here. If we select this mask icon, select the mask that we want to use, which would be water jugs. Plug this into the factor, and there you go, sat right behind the jugs. So this is before, and this is after. Uh, small things like that make it look as if it's sat in the scene will help sell it as well um, but the shadow here that will again help sell it since if the statue was there in real life it would have a shadow so you kind of want to add these things that ties it in and makes it look more realistic I guess so duplicate that mix node plug this image into the bottom uh, duplicate this mask node as well I want to change this mask now to the watercolor sorry to the shadow <laughs> We'll do the watercolor last. Plug that into the factor. Okay, so we don't actually see anything different right now because we need to just darken this uh, this color. So go to color, RGB curves, and make sure we plug this onto the bottom string like this. And then if we click here in the center and just drag it down a little bit, you see how it gives a shadow look. Looks pretty good. Now obviously the mask that we used is a little bit too high, so I just need to go back to the movie clip editor and just reduce the mask. But overall, I think it looks pretty good. If you think it looks a bit too sharp, you can also add some feathering or a blur node and just feather this up a little bit. Again, it's entirely up to you how you want to use it. So the next thing we need to do is change the color of the water. And that's very simple to do. Just add a node and change the color of it. So Shift A, go to color, then mix, plug this on here. Connect that up to the viewer node. Shift A, go to input, then mask, let's change this to the watercolor, plug this into the factor, and then we can change this from white to a blue color, something like this, and then change the blend mode to soft light. Now you can play around with the blend modes, a different blend mode would give you a different result. Um, this is quite vibrant and quite um, exotic looking, which is how I wanted it to be. But if you want to reduce the saturation or change the colour, you can do that. Okay, it's entirely up to you how it looks. So you can just keep playing around with it until you find something that works for you. Um, but I think that looks good, very exotic looking. Um, we can move on. So when we come to render this thing, it's going to be a 250 frame animation. So it's going to take quite a while since we're using the render layers. So instead of that, what I'm going to do is just render a single frame render this uh, statue once and then bring it back in as an image node um, you'll see what I mean in a second if I plug this into the viewer node this is what we're going to be rendering just the statue with color grading that's it so let's plug this here into the composite node then we can go ahead and give this a render also make sure you bump up the samples quite high since we only need to render this once 
and we also want to render this as a PNG file type so make sure you set PNG as the file type so as we can see it took 27 seconds just to render this single frame and press F3 and we're going to save this make sure you remember where you save this to as well and make sure you save it as a PNG again it's important you, you save the transparency okay so now we've got this uh, we don't need this render layer and this color grading so we can actually get rid of them uh, before we do that shift A go to input add in an image go ahead and open up the image it'd be nice if it was saved there but <laughs> go ahead and open up the image this and this is essentially the same thing as the render layers except it's going to render nowhere near as long so select them two and delete them we no longer need them plug this uh, I'll plug this back into the viewer node and we can see it's pretty much exactly the same but when we go to render it the, sh the time's going to be okay so we need to connect it up to the composite as well forgot to do that my bad plug this into the composite as well Okay, so instead of taking 27 seconds, I think it was before, this is now only going to take 5 point, well, 5 seconds, <laughs> 5.3 seconds, which is pretty good. Okay, so now we can go on to the color grading or add any other different things, like maybe change the color of the tiles and things like that. But before and after, it's a big improvement. Again, you want to add some color grading as well finish this off um, but again that's entirely up to you how it looks remember we changed that to PNG before when we saved off the image now we want to change this to FFmpeg video since we're rendering out the whole movie clip so select encoding select presets and then we want to select H.264 in MP4 format all these settings will work as standard so you don't need to play around with them go ahead and change the output then go ahead and hit animate so hopefully this tutorial helped. Um, check out part two if you want to see how to use the offset and X and offset Y to kind of move things around. It's pretty useful. Um, if this tutorial helped, be sure to give it a like. As always, thanks for watching and uh, until next time.